This is the Speedy B app, and it lets you configure your Betaflight flight controller from your cell phone. And I don't need to tell you why that's useful, like not everybody brings their laptop everywhere they go. Not everybody even has a laptop. This is the Speedy B Adapter V3, and Runcam wants you to think that if you want to use the Speedy B app, you need this adapter. But I don't think that's true. I think that if I just plug my phone into my flight controller with this little USB cable, it'll just work. I'm Joshua Bardwell. You're going to learn something today. Normally, this is the part of the video where I say I received this product, but I did not receive any cash or other compensation in exchange for the video. However, this video is a little bit of an exception. Runcam paid for me to make this video about the SpeedyB adapter. Before we find out if the SpeedyB adapter is even needed, let's take a look at some of the things Runcam has added to V3 of the adapter, because V1 of the adapter basically was just a USB to a Bluetooth adapter that you plug into your flight controller. And if you could plug directly into your phone, you really didn't need it. V2 of the adapter added Wi-Fi and it added the ability to flash Betaflight firmware and update BLHeli ESCs from the cell phone app over Wi-Fi, which is something that, can you flash via USB? I think there are USB flasher apps, so that still is not entirely unique, but the ability to flash over Wi-Fi is kind of compelling. The V3 of the SpeedyB adapter goes even further. So if we just plug in a battery here, we can see that Oh, it's a battery checker. Yeah, it's a battery checker. I mean, okay, that's nice. You always need a battery checker, right? On this side, we've got a USB-A connector, and if we plug that in, and then we plug into the phone, it's charging my phone. So it is also a XT60 to USB adapter that you can use to power things in the field. And is it fast charging? Sure enough, it is. It's fast charging. That's great. We've also got a pH 2.0 connector for whoop batteries. There's not a BT 2.0 version, so if you have BT 2.0 batteries, you will need an uh, adapter. But you're probably used to that by now if you fly BT 2.0. And then finally here on the top, there's a USB-C and a micro USB, which can be used to connect to your flight controller. So let's do that now. So this quadcopter has a micro USB on the flight controller. So I wonder if this cable is actually like reversible. If I put USB-C in the adapter and then plug into the flight controller, uh, well, nothing's happened yet. We got to plug a battery in too. Hmm. Flight controller has woken up. The Bluetooth icon here is indicating that it's searching. And then here in the SpeedyB app, I'm going to hit the Bluetooth icon. Yeah, oh, found the adapter, connect. Oh, switch to easy mode. No, thank you. What did I say, expert mode. And now we're connected and you can see we basically have the full Betaflight configurator here. So we've got the setup tab, ports tab, configuration tab, etc., etc. It's all there. If we go back to the app and instead of hitting the connect button, we hit this lightning bolt, uh, it'll tell us the charging status of the adapter. So I'll plug my phone back in again and we can see, uh, we can see how many watts it's pulling, what voltage it's at, how many amps it's pulling. In addition, we can set the low battery alarm to keep us from killing our LiPo. And we can also adjust the external voltage scale. If we, if we find that the voltage that the adapter is reading is a little bit off, we can calibrate that. So that's pretty nice. But the SpeedyB app can do a lot more than just configure your flight controller. If we swipe to the right here, uh, we can see that it's got a built-in black box analyzer. And it doesn't just analyze black box logs on your phone. No, check this out. If we hit load from flight controller and then connect. Oh, oh, it does have Wi-Fi. It just uses Wi-Fi for things like, well, uh, downloading black box logs, which are larger and take more data than Bluetooth might comfortably uh, support. If we connect to it, these are the black box logs that are actually stored in the data flash on the flight controller. And we can pick one and download it right off the flight controller to our phone. And then once we've done that, we can, oh look, it's Blackbox Log Viewer. Well, pretty much, 
Like, it's not as full featured as the desktop one, obviously, but it's got a lot of it's got a lot of stuff. Yeah, the number one thing it doesn't seem to have is the uh, the waterfall chart, the vibration analysis, which would be super nice. But maybe they'll add that in the future. There's an app for flashing firmware, and we can flash Betaflight, EmuFlight, or iNav. And again, we can do that directly over the wireless. Don't let the fact that, here, I'll get rid of this USB cable just to make sure it's clear that we don't need that. That's just for charging. We can do that wirelessly. The app also has a configurator for BLHeli SESCs. And in order to demonstrate that, I've switched over to this GEPRC Smart 3.5 because my quad has a BLHeli 32 ESC. If I just connect here via Bluetooth, it finds the adapter. I hit connect. And we can read setup. And here are our BLHeli S settings. And we can even flash the firmware. And I'm very curious to find out if they've included uh, firmware like Jazz Maverick, uh, Blue Jay, these firmwares that allow bi-directional D-Shot to work on BLHeli S ESCs. Well, no, it looks like they only support the official BLHeli S releases. That'd be a nice feature to add. Like, probably they're not gonna flash JESC because he charges for it. But free ones like Blue Jay, seems like they should be able to add that. I don't know. Finally, the one-touch configuration option lets you automatically configure a series of Diatone and Eosheen ready-to-fly quads. You just pick the one that you've got and hit Start Connecting. Oh, you set the uh, set the channel order, and it will basically restore the factory config to those quadcopters. That's actually really slick. I actually didn't know that was here until this very minute. That is really freaking slick. It looks like there's a limited number of quads that are supported right now, but who knows, maybe it'll expand in the future. Is this USB cable reversible? Because if it is, then you don't need to carry both a USB-C and a micro USB, depending on what your flight controller has. Uh, you could just swap the cable around. So we have been using it plugged into USB-C on the adapter and micro on the flight controller. Let's turn that around We'll do micro on the ad adapter and USB-C on the flight controller and see if it works. Like surely it works, right? Yeah. Just to make sure we can connect. Yeah, it works. Very clever RunCam. By the way, RunCam suggests that you store this cable plugged in like so. That way you don't lose it. And is this like a special cable? Are USB cables normally reversible like this? I don't know. Well, that brings us to the question that opened this video. Do you even need this damn thing? Because I think that if I plug into my Samsung Galaxy phone and I plug into this flight controller here, nothing happened. Hold on, I'm not done yet. High powered USB device connected. Cannot access this device. Connected device needs external power supply. What if we change from USB controlled by a connected device to USB controlled by this device? Couldn't switch. I swear I've done this. Aha! It's awake. Something's up with this cable. Runcam's done something funky with this cable, so it's like reversible, but it means it doesn't work. Yeah, with, with just plugging into the phone. So, okay, so this is what I was expecting to see. And if I just hit okay here and then hit the USB icon, boom. Yes, connect, boom. We're connected and it's working without, okay, it's not wireless, but given that you have to plug in a battery and then plug this into the flight controller, that's not really like, oh, it's wireless. We just, you have to plug stuff in anyway. So it's not that different. Well, there's a little more to it than that. If you have an iOS device, they won't let you do that. You can't just plug in a cable to your flight. They don't, you can only do it via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. They lock you out. If you have an Android device, not all Android devices will support what's called USB host mode, which is what's needed to do this. There, there is another thing called a USB OTG adapter, which can allow those devices to do it. But at that point, you kind of may as well just buy the Speedy B. They're, they're probably about the same price. I don't know that for sure. Um, but if you do have a smartphone, download the SpeedyB app and just get a USB-C to C or USB-C to micro connector or whatever you need. Try just plugging your quadcopter in and see if you can just use the SpeedyB app for free without buying the adapter.
But if you do decide to buy the adapter, there's a link in the video description and it's probably an affiliate link because that's one of the ways I support my channel. And in case you don't know what that means, what are you new here? Welcome. <laughs> it means that you click the affiliate link, then you make any purchase at the affiliated store. You buy this product, you buy any product, click the link, make a purchase, I get a commission. That's how it works. Doesn't cost you anything and uh, easy way for you to support the channel. Thank you so much to Runcam for supporting, for, for sponsoring this video. I might not normally make a video just about oh, a little, little adapter here, but since Runcam felt really strongly about me doing it, I felt really strongly about taking their money. <laughs> That's going to do it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Happy flying. You guys, I don't know where I am, and I, I don't know what's going to happen, but if I don't make it out of this, I just want to know that you subscribe to my channel. Or maybe join my Patreon or, or click one of click one of these videos I picked out for you. <gasps>